Um, anyway, the, um, the thing about using toned paper versus, uh, uh, versus white paper is that, um, like I was saying with the way light works, fundamentally you're not going to be uh, um, changing the way you think about things in the sense that you know, you're still going to be looking for the relationship of a reflecting light versus a uh, coarse shadow and half tone versus reflecting light and so on. But uh, the objective of toned paper is not to take your pencil and try to exploit all the white pencil you can. The objective of toned paper is to get the tone of the paper to do as much of the work as possible. So, I mean, if I was to do, let's say, um, that sphere again. Draw in, you know, cast shadow. And if I was just to mass in completely the shadow and make it really dark, I'm going to take the white pencil and completely fill in the, um, the light mass, I'd kind of eliminate the tone of the paper, which means I'd eliminate a lot of the things I can get out of this paper. I'd eliminate the range in half tones I might can, uh, can exploit. And I've already got a middle value down, so a lot of my values are kind of done for me, right? Um, the other thing you don't want to do is, if you're struggling with a value, put it down like that and then go back on top of it with the white pencil and try to mix it with the white and the black. Okay, again, you're kind of trying to mix a middle value that's already there, okay? Um, so uh, stay away from that and stay away from trying to do a reflected light by drawing a white, pen a white pencil mark in the shadow itself. Um, the lightest light is most likely um, going to be a little bit below, in this situation especially, a little bit below the value of this tone of the paper, but again, it's variable depending on your setup. So. Uh, stay away from doing all that. And I'm going to start with a B carbon pencil and some of this. And fundamentally, I'm not going to start any different than we have been starting. I'm still going to start with the gesture. I'm still going to start with measuring proportions and all, like I always do. There's the top of the head, bring the chin to there, the hair come around to there. So I kind of see, you, I, you could say with the way the hair is falling, an almost triangular like shape that happens. The bottom of the triangle there, up to the top, and the point is just that curve of the head. And then in that center line, Like I say, I'm not trying to make um, perfect marks right now. I'm just getting an uh, approximation for everything I'm going to work with. Um, roughly, I'm saying the eyes are going at that diagonal. I'm trying to make, um, I want to say informed decisions with the way I'm looking at it. I am measuring with my eyes, but at the same time, I'm realizing this is the very beginning, the very you know, the block end, so I want to keep things relatively uh, changeable. Vision to hair. And I think one um, problem a lot of people have for quite a while is that They'll want to reference a lot of the features too soon. And right now, I'm just referencing right here, not so much the eye as I am, the shape of the eye socket. You know, I can see just under the eyebrow a little bit of a highlight that goes along with the bones changing in the eye, down to the nose, quickly to the mouth. So early in the drawing, I've taken an assessment of the whole before the parts. I'm not getting caught up on any one spot. And the shat cast shadow. Across the head, this way, and the shadow across the hair. And if anybody has questions, I mean, feel free to ask while I'm doing this. Don't uh, think you gotta, you know, be silent. So I want to see, there's a, a loose assessment of what I have to work with. 
cast shadow up the nose, over to the side of the head. Because the shape of the light and shadow right now are really more important than getting a hard line for a mouth or contour of an eye or something. Now I'm going to start thinking about um, adjusting and measuring. So I want to make sure the overall size of the head is accurate with what I've um, put down with the, you know, the chin down to the shirt where the hair is ending, the angle of the eyes, angle of the center line of the head. So. Angle of the brow ridge. I remember I think what I said earlier in the semester about that issue of the one-third, one-third, one-third. It's variable depending on your position to the pose. So I'm going to check to see if it is one-third or if it's slightly different because my eye level is a little bit below her head. So the distance from the bottom of the nose to the chin from my perspective goes a touch above where the brow ridge is going to be. If I was to get a little higher up, it'd probably be right even with the, with the distance of the bottom of the nose to the brow ridge. But here it's going to be just a little above. It'll be right about just above that eyebrow. Let's see, the chin's going to be there. Eyebrow there. And there's the unit of measurement. That should be equal just above the hair to the chin to the bottom of the nose. Come down. So that hairline needs to come down to there. And like I've said um, a lot during the semester, you know, if I started measuring the pages like that with no gesture drawing, I'd probably be struggling right now. I wouldn't know what I'm dealing with. So if it takes you a little longer to get your gesture, let it take you a little longer. Some poses you're going to get the gesture relatively quick. Some it's going to take you a while to get a lock in on what the diagonals and shifts are, are, that are going on in the pose are relatively doing. So. shape to the way the hair moves over. And like I said uh, earlier in the semester, I'm not doing this for hair, you know, getting the big shape of the hair. And all my lines, with um, carbon pencil and with charcoal pencil, it's really easy to make a dark mark real fast just because they're naturally darker than um, than uh, graphite pencils, but you really have to push being light-handed, otherwise you're going to have trouble making adjustments. And that's I'm trying to be as light-handed as possible right now because inevitably I'm still early in the drawing. I know I'm going to make adjustments. I know there are going to be things that that kind of get easier to distinguish as I establish more easy to find mistakes as I go along. Just kind of continually lining things up mm -hmm. by little by little. That turn in the uh, in the jaw in relation to the end of the eye, directly down, even the way her head's turned. And usually when drawing on toned paper, there's an eagerness to want to get to the white pencil. I would suggest going as long as you can without using the white pencil so you can get a firm lock on all of your shapes and proportions and things like that. 